What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of KM Videos, True Stories. Welcome to another episode, KM Videos, True Stories. In the morning, may I kick a little soul? I get the pop pop May I kick a little soul? I will always be a hustler. May I kick a little soul? I will always taste my bread. May I? That was it. I never stopped, I never stopped banging, I, I started banging hard, then I got so hard, till it was a shame. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of KM Videos, True, 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 True Stories. Today's episode takes place right there in the hood, around 1990, and there was this family with two brothers, the King brothers, Ronald King and Gregory King. They moved on Harcourt Avenue between 54th and 57th Street, just one block east of the house that I grew up in. They had just moved to the hood from Mid-City, Venice and Spalding, in 1989. A lot of homies lived on that block. Big Nutty Boy, Little Nutty Boy, Big Wolf, Tiny Roscoe, Lil' Kev Mac. So during that time, I started to meet this family the brothers like to get high, like to get drunk, so they would usually be drunk and high, smoking crack. They would have these little small get-together, small smoke parties at their house from time to time. I remember they had a camper in the driveway at one point. They would go out in the backyard at one point into the garage and, you know, always had to have a place to get high. They had an elderly mother, so she didn't really know what was going on. and. This dude, Greg, was a dark-skinned, slender dude, muscular chest, small arms, but you could tell they, they was cut up at one point. He was like a throwback 1970s player guy. He had this perm. Sometimes it might look red or might look gold, I'm assuming, from the chemicals. Greg looked like a dark-skinned, old-school superfly. Greg was stuck in the old times as he used to wear these silk shirts with the big collars, shirt unbuttoned sometime. He would wear bare bottom slacks or jeans. And sometime he would wear his Levi's starch real good, folded up at the bottom. He would wear biscuits, Stacy Adams, or some small non-name brand shoes that I used to clown, he used to look funny on him. Right, because this dude had small feet, but he was always dressing fresh. It was just old school style, like he was cute from the Magnificent Seven or something, you know what I mean? And um, we became kind of tight because Greg used to get a social security check. And Greg would ask me, hey, hey Kev, let me get 60 and I'll give you 100 on Friday. Cool, I'm with that. It's free money, you know what I mean? I know where they live, you know, they cool people. His brother Ronald used to loan me his car. I'll get into one or two of those stories at another time. But Greg will walk over to my house. Hey, Kev, can I get 40 more for another 100? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So he was always good with his credit. He would always come back and pay me. And then came a time where Greg owed me $500 and he started ducking me. So I'm not hearing from Greg no more. I call over there, I hear Greg say, tell him I'm not here. I'm like, oh, all right. So I rush over there. Somebody opens up the front door, I bust in. I go all through the house looking for Greg and I don't find Greg. But I know he was just there because I just heard him on, on the phone. So boom, I leave. I can never catch Greg. I'm asking people what Greg, and it's like everybody's covering for him. So I'm like, all right. Greg was a penitentiary dude. Did a lot of time in the penitentiary before they moved over to the hood. He had a lot of prison stories about being in a hole and um, a lot of crazy stuff in, in the penitentiary. Greg used to tell me all these stories about riots in the penitentiary and sticking fools and going to the hole. And I would always like to hear his stories. I thought he was crazy. He was getting a, a crazy check. But 
fly dude did everything slow. He moved slow, walked slow, talked slow, even got high slow. But he was always good for any any amounts of credit or any favors you needed, store runs or, or what, what have you, right? So I can't find this dude. And one day I go over there, I got a wooden bat with me. It just so happens Greg is walking from the backyard by his driveway. He crossed onto his neighbor's grass. And I jump out and I run up on him. Greg don't move or nothing. He just stopped like in slow motion. And I take the bat and I swing the bat as hard as I could. Boom! And it kind of hits him right by his elbow. And he grabs his arm like this. So I'm waiting to hear what he got to say. I want to talk to this dude, you know what I mean? And Greg's just standing there. I'm like, where's my money? And he don't say nothing. So I, I take the bat and I hit him in his leg. Bow! And I'm just swinging the bat. Bow! 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 And I swing back this way. Bow! Bow! I'm just, I'm tearing his legs up and Greg ain't moving. Greg ain't falling or nothing. And I'm like, man, what the hell is going on? I was hitting him so much and so hard, I'm tired. So I just gave up, like, I mean, what can I do, right? And there were people coming out the house, so I'm like, you know, those are witnesses. So I'm going to go ahead and leave. I leave. Now, I'm at home cleaning up my dating's on my car. So I'm, I'm not paying attention. And Greg walks up on me. I'm like, oh, shit. And he looks like his eyes are wide open, like, I don't know if he was just hell of a high or he was spooked like I was spooked. But I'm like, what's up? And he says, hey, man, I need to talk to you. All right, talk. I'm waiting for him to pull out like a 22 or 32 or 38 because he's so old school, right? And you can see this dude has no fear. I'd have beat him as hard as I could with a bat. And this fool comes walking up on me. I'm thinking for revenge. He said, man, why did you do that? So now I'm offended. Why did I do what? And he's like, you know, around the corner. I'm offended because I'm thinking this motherfucker got the audacity to come and ask me why did I do that? So I stand up and I fire on Greg. Boom, hit him in his chin. Boom, he takes it. And he's like, he's like man, why are you doing that, man? Man, this is my partner. This is my buddy. I didn't want to do him like this, but I didn't have no choice. And I'm ready to throw a combination on him. I'm already like shocked I didn't put him down, but not so much because I couldn't even get him down with a bat. And he says, he says, hold on, man. Like my arms are still sore. I'm like, your arm? I'm worried about this nigga's legs, his chin, his knees and all that. And I'm thinking I need to get to that bat, right? And he's like, look, man. Man, I'm going to give you your money, man. But don't do me like that no more. Like, fool, fool, I'm going to do you like that every time I see you until I pay you. He said, well, check this out. And he pulls out a couple hundred dollar bills. And he said, here, man, just don't do me like that no more. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. So me and Greg become real cool after that. And I find out. Greg was smoking charm. He was on PCP. So when I got at him with that bat, and when I fired on him in his jaw, Greg was high as a kite, man, off PCP. So no matter what I did to him, no matter how hard I tried, number one, he didn't understand. And number two, he was not going down. He had Superman strength. After that day, whenever Greg would come over to my house and knock on my door, he would usually start the conversation with, man, don't hit me, man. You know, and so it became a running joke. But for the life of me, I couldn't understand why I couldn't get this dude down, why I wasn't doing no damage to him, why he wasn't going to no hospital, until I found out he was smoking PCP. Anyways, that's my story for the day. Thank you guys for watching, man. I was a little wild in my younger days, man. I was violent, but 
as I've gotten older, man, I'm so laid back, man. I don't want nothing to do with nothing violent. I don't want to deal with nothing that's going to give me a headache, nothing illegal. But be sure to click that like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I tell all sorts of stories here, man, all type of hood stories, things that went on in the middle class ghettos and around Los Angeles in the 1980s and 90s. I'm out of here, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Salute.